Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Ripple effect. A deadly shooting prompts a school lockdown as the suspects hide between cars in this parking lot before a sheriff arrests them. Now the family of a teenager is left picking up the pieces. I never thought I'd be that auntie burying my nephew. We never thought we would be burying our nephew. He's too young. He was 16 years old. What happened minutes before the deadly bullet was fired? Plus, this map comes with an attention-grabbing headline. Why well, researchers are saying Michigan has the most PFAS-contaminated sites in the U.S. Every second counts when you're in a struggle with a knife-wielding man. But a simple twist of fate saved a police officer's life. Sir, officer, I'm here to help. What do you need me to do? And at that point, she had said, uh, get the knife, get the knife. That tops our news here at 6. Usually we look to first responders to be lifesavers. It was the other way around for one police officer. Rod Maloney has a look at how a few bystanders made sure this police officer made it home safely to her family. This is what you'd call downtown Whittemore Lake, Poly Market. And it's not the kind of place where you'd expect to think that the thin blue line would find its way here. But yesterday, going in this direction down Main Street and then through Polly's Market parking lot here was a police chase. And an officer almost didn't make it home last night. Are you I serious? Love it, man. Right there. The chase ended on the agitated man's front lawn just up the street, and Sergeant Megan Paul tried to calm him when he got out of his red pickup. Stop, stop. stop! Then he tried to get back in, and they wound up battling over the knife he had on his belt. Wrestled for probably 10, 15 seconds. Um, he was trying to. I had the knife in my hand, the blade of, or the, the butt of it, and he was trying to get it from me. Painter Ray Bullis just picked up dinner at Polly's and saw the chase go by. Curious, he rode his motorcycle and found the scene. Officer Paul was battling the man, and she was winded. I put my hand on the suspect's neck and arm and told the officer, Officer, I'm here to help. What do you need me to do? And at that point, she had said, uh, get the knife get the knife. He couldn't find it, but Sergeant Paul did and threw it behind them. If he would have got a hold of that knife, it would have ended very badly for one or both of us. Definitely something I wouldn't want to see happen ever again. And there were two others helping Ray and the sergeant, and they subdued the man. And I'm glad it had a good outcome where nobody was hurt and the officer, the woman officer, made it home to her family. Sergeant Paul thanked everyone who helped her. My husband and my children thanked them as well. Now, you're probably wondering how it is that this all started. Well, the family of the man had wanted him to have a psychiatric hold. He ran at that, and that's how the sergeant found him in traffic. That's where the chase all began. The man uh, has a warrant for his arrest, uh, but he has charges pending against him as a result of this chase. Reporting live, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Yeah. All right, Rod. All right, let's get to the breaking news now that we've been following this afternoon from suburban Denver. At least seven people wounded in a school shooting, though deputies not saying if the injured are students yet. It happened at a K through 12 school that has more than 1800 students. We also know two suspects thus far are in custody, but deputies are still searching the school. However, they do believe the threat is over. We'll continue to update that story as we can. Also developing tonight, the latest effort by the state of Michigan to make sure your drinking water is safe uh, has been to test the test for contaminants of PFAS. And new data is showing that Michigan has more contamination than any other state. Jason Colthorpe is here to explain it for us, Jason. Yeah, and it's actually explainable and not nearly as worrisome as it seems, according to the state. It's all fallout from the Flint water crisis and the state not wanting to take any kind of chance when it comes to PFAS. This map comes with an attention grabbing headline. Michigan has the most PFAS contaminated sites in the U.S. PFAS is polyfluoroalkyl substances, chemical compounds that have been found in industrial products since the 1940s and are now being identified to limit any potential harm, like ending up in people's drinking water. Now back to the map. The good news is that Michigan is lit up like a Christmas tree because the state says we're one of the few states actively looking for PFAS. Michigan, in fact, was the first to test drinking water in every community, school, and daycare in the state. And of that, 90%
have no detectable levels of PFAS. The better news is, according to the Great Lakes Water Authority, PFAS is not in our water source. The contamination happens when things containing PFAS, like firefighting foam, seeps into the groundwater and into private wells. The bottom line is this map is actually a good thing for Michigan. The former DEQ, now the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy told us this today. While most states are taking a wait and see approach and the federal government moves slowly, here in Michigan we're committed to working together to root out this contaminant, protect at-risk populations and drive down exposure levels. No state is moving faster along so many fronts. Now, during those tests, only two locations, the city of Parchment and an elementary school in Robinson, which is west of Grand Rapids, were found to have PFAS in drinking water that was higher than the EPA health advisory level. Those were dealt with and are using substitute water from, mm -hmm. from here on out. You talked about it a little bit at 5 o'clock. PFAS is also related to that mystery substance, that oozy kind of stuff that was coming out in Melvindale. Yeah, tests are back on that, and it was highly concentrated with PFAS levels, as a matter of fact. The next step there is to identify the source, but what they think that is is basically firefighting foam, not from the two sources they originally were looking at, Marathon Oil or the railroad, but now they just need to nail it down. These things are in so many goods, though, that we yeah. all use every day in now. the last so 80 years. years. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay, Jason. Well, turning our attention to the weather now, it's drying out tonight uh, as we take a live look outside through our Windsor Sky Cam. Uh, but we are also tracking some wet weather in the future. Ben is here with a look at what we can expect. Hi, Ben. Yeah, Kim and Devin, there is more rain on the way, but it's the winds tomorrow that are going to cause the problem. In fact, we've already got a flood warning currently in effect for flooding that's going on right now. Southern end of St. Clair County, we're on uh, Algonac and also near Harsons Island. High levels on the St. Clair River already causing uh, some buildings to be underwater there. Lakeshore flood warnings posted along the east side tomorrow in advance of those east winds that are going to be coming in here. This is 8 a.m. Wednesday through 8 a.m. Thursday, 24 hours straight here. A little bit later, but for the same reasons up here in Sanilac and St. Clair County, flood advisories have already been posted. It's the winds that are going to do the damage tomorrow, and you can see it's the direction and the speed. Once we get past the noon hour, that's when those winds start to increase 15 to 20 miles an hour coming almost due east. That's just going to push those high lake levels on shore, causing flooding and possibly some beach erosion there as well. And then they'll eventually turn around to the south once we get into Thursday morning. Cool night tonight. We'll look at some 30s in your four zone forecast in just a few minutes. Guys. Now to new information tonight in a deadly shooting that prompted a school lockdown. On the right side of your screen, you see the suspects hiding between cars in the school parking lot before a sheriff arrests them. On the left side, a map of where the shooting occurred before the suspects ended up in that parking lot. Well, tonight, Larry Spruill has a look at what may have prompted the shooting. The store owner tells me that the shooting happened here in this parking lot and the family placed these balloons there in his honor. 47 is his favorite number. Purple is his favorite color. I just spoke with the family right now. They're trying to figure out what happened and why. It's, it's sad, real sad, but it's unfortunate. I just got a call, my, my nephew shot. It's a phone call Margaret Gillespie was not expecting. The news that her nephew, 16-year-old Marquise Gillespie, is dead is taking a toll on the family. He's too young. He was 16 years old. He just turned 16. That's so young. Tuesday, I talked to an employee here at this store in Ypsilanti. That employee tells me Marquise was inside the store Monday afternoon when three young men followed him inside. That's when he left and they followed him outside and shot him. I never thought I'd be that auntie burying my nephew. We never thought we would be burying our nephew. Tuesday, the family met at the same spot where Marquise was killed. Returning back to the scene leaves them with more questions and pain. It got to stop. It can't continue to happen like this. And we have conf we have confirmed by police. Our police sources tell us that they have arrested at least one person. That suspect is 16 years old. We're allowed tonight. Larry Sproul, local four. OK, Larry. All right. Meanwhile, in East Point, the search continues for a breaking and entering suspect. Take a look here at your screen. Police want to talk to this man in connection to several crimes. Those crimes happened along Nine Mile Road at both businesses and homes in East Point. If you recognize this person or have any information, contact East Point Police.
Still to come, studies show that half of people who think they have a food allergy actually have a less dangerous problem. The doc is in with a look at what problem it is and how to determine if you have it. But first, folks in Waterford Township are finally going to get a look at something instead of the empty Summit Place Mall. A look at the plans to breathe new life into the property. And again, we continue to follow the breaking news. Suburban Denver, at least seven people hurt in a school shooting. A deputy still not telling us whether or not it was students who were hurt, but it happened at a big school, a K through 12 school that has more than 1800 students. Two people in custody at this hour, but uh, while deputies say they are still searching the school, they believe the threat is over. But keep it here. We'll keep you updated.